Welcome to Newcastle Zoo. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. And congratulations, this is your first solo exhibition in Australia and yeah. I'll be honoured to be having you here in Timeless Textiles. It's my first time in Australia and it's yeah. fabulous, I love it. <laughs> Tell me a bit about Fragments. What was behind Fragments for this show? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to uh, show new work, obviously, and I wanted to show existing work and sort of combine the two. My work very rarely is a square, very rarely, it's always fragmented and I thought fragments have summed it up really as a, as a whole um, because often they do look like little fragments. So I think you've been working on this show for some years haven't you from tr your travels and getting your eye into quite obscure things around you? Well that's what I do generally because um, I do get to travel quite a lot, I'm very fortunate in that respect. A downside of that is that I'm not always at home to do the sewing, so there's pressure on there, but you can't have everything in this world. But when I do travel, um, I my best friend is my camera, and I love taking photographs. Um, and so I always got my eye out for something that appeals to me, whether it be you know, the usual... I mean, it's, they're all very cliché, but they're what I love, the torn posters, the... Um, rusted metal, you know, we were in Italy and they had all these billboard type posters that were all metal that they put the voting things on and they were all ripped off and oh, they were just gorgeous, they were all blue and shining, things like that I love. Um, and my husband, as soon as he sees me, he's like, because he knows that I'll be there for 20 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> he's tapping his foot, so, but uh, I can't, I, I would like to sit and sketch, but I don't have the time to do that, so um, I, I do the photographs and I use those as my inspiration. So did you train your eye over the years to see the things that most people would walk straight past or separate? I'm, I'm sure there's an element of that. I think I've always noticed things though. Um, even on my degree, my tutor said I had an eye for... See, you know, she said I saw the world a bit differently. So um, I think it's always been there. I think digital cameras have allowed me the freedom to really go for it because you're not worried, you know, in the old days you had your 14 pictures, they had to be really good. It doesn't matter now, I can click, you know, press the button, click away and yeah, they're there and, and it's, it's good fun and then I come back and, and work on them. So. So just talk us through the process of, um, you've got some images that you're really fond of, that you're probably thinking of whilst you're cooking dinner or you know, going to sleep or whatever. Um, just talk us through what you do with those images. Well, what I'll do is I'll, sometimes I print them off. Don't always print them off. Um, if there's an offer on and it's quite cheap, I might get a batch done. And that's always quite nice to have them there. Um, but if I can't do that, I'll sit at the computer Select various ones and I'll put them on uh, up in Photoshop or you know, some other program, doesn't really matter. And, uh, and then I play around with them. So I might crop them, uh, zoom in on them, I alter them using, you know, diff well, I don't really use filters so much. I alter the, um, the light on them, I'd say, the colour, just maybe make them more vibrant. Um, but yeah, that's how I'll do that. Sometimes I'll make them into black and white images so that I can make screens for them. So Thermofax has been really good for me because I live on an island so it's quite hard to get proper screens done. It's expensive, really. And so Thermofax, they're, they're not cheap, but they're flat, compact, and I can you know, upload those. A lady makes them for me and sends them to me, so that's great. So I use Thermofax screens. So that's the photos then get used in the next stage so I may sometimes just print off from the printer things I like and then take them into the print room have them there and all the time I'm just thinking of the colours that are there the shapes that are there and the marks that are there so then they're sort of you know going around in my head and then I start printing and then printing on fabric yeah yeah so I just it's always white fabric um, Occasionally in my work I've used like printed bought fabric, very rarely, very rarely. It's always usually my stuff. I'll use uh, Procyon dyes and I'll do pigment dyes sometimes on the top and I also do screen um, discharge printing. So 
that's on the cotton. And then I do sometimes, again, use the voil, synthetic voil, put that on the top, print through both. See, it's like two for one, so, which is quite nice. So, uh, you know, I mix that up and, uh, and get a batch together. So I'm sort of making my own materials for when I start to construct the pieces. Um, so there's quite a long process before I've even started to make it. So then the day comes when you're yeah. surrounded by all these beautiful patches of fabrics that mm. you've uh, worked on and then you start placing. Well I start, I then start, and it's not necessarily uh, on the printed fabric, sometimes I might then get a fabric and manipulate the fabric. So uh, in some of my work I've used synthetic felt. Um, polyester felt, so I quite like um, colouring that um, and uh, machine stitching on it and heat gunning it. And I'll usually try and work that into the fabric then. Sometimes I just place it over the printed fabric so it comes through the holes. And I also do a bit of paper lamination, so that goes then back to the um, Photoshop bit where I'm doing the photos, so I may print some of those off paper laminate, sorry, onto the voil. So that, again, in the print room, so there's a bit of that going on as well. It's lots of different things. So it seems to me that for each piece you might use a, a different array of techniques, mm -hmm. whichever it is will give you the look that you want at the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And is that a growing process, or at the beginning, when you've got your stats of materials and print around you, do you know in your mind whether it's going to be one of the more sculptural pieces or one of the ones that are a bit more um, fragmented? No. It just uh, it, it, they evolve really. Uh, they take on their own life. Um, I mean, I have sometimes I have things in my head, and I do. Uh, I often do like. I mean, really basic sketches. We're not talking anything fantastic. I'll just do a little wiggly thing. Mm, yeah, and I and I have, and I have in the past. You know, these people have beautiful sketchbooks, and it's all there, and it's all planned. And I just think, oh, <laughs> and uh, and I tried, I tried that, and then what happens is I completely ignore it. <laughs> I think, oh, what was the point of that? So, so I just have to. It's just me, and I know because I've been doing it now for a few years, and it's just the way I work. And I start to pin things together start to work with them and, and then I place them up and I'll have more than one on the go at the at mm. time and, uh, and then I look at them and there's a lot of looking and that takes time as well um, and moving things around and I use the digital camera again because I take photos of them in certain positions because if you unpin them and then you do something you think oh no, I liked it better the other way you can't always remember mm. so you can look back at the photos and think oh yeah that was much better um, so that's always a good thing, just to take hmm. pictures as, the, as it's you know, happening. Hmm. Um, yeah. Then you do a lot of machine embroidery puzzle looks. Yeah, I do, because I've got arthritis in my fingers. It's getting much, much worse. It's getting really quite painful. So um, I use my computer, my, keep, uh, my computer, my sewing machine, and my computerised sewing machine. They're my babies. They're your friends. Yeah. And when you first started off, your work was very flat, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah. So you've now made them in wonderful uh, 3D shapes, almost. Yeah, because um, it was interesting. When I first started doing them, I thought they had to be like paintings, which are flat. Isn't it funny? <laughs> and I was making them really flat. I was like stretching them onto stiffened violin and... Oh, there's two pieces I did that were based on Pompeii. Um, and it's gone out of my head, but they were, I Troponto quilted them slightly, so they were slightly raised and I really liked that. And, and it didn't really happen until uh, this one where I really thought, oh, I really like, you know, I was doing it before, but then I thought, this is really working, and it was the, and I padded the top bit, and I just loved that, um, and I thought, that's just the way to go. And I found as well with, even now, with later pieces, uh, I did one called Rust Rose, and I did one for the Embroiders Guild, and it's the bits where I've manipulated them, scrunched them up, that my little heart goes, oh, you know when you're making something and you just love it. And, uh, and I know that's where I've got to do more of that. Uh, that's, that that's, where I'll, that's where I'll be going. More sculpting of fabric, I think, definitely. Uh, yeah. And I think there's a story behind the embrace, isn't there? Uh, well, there, there's a few stories. Uh, <laughs> it, this piece, 
well, in 2013, I got into Fibre Arts International and was so pleased about that. And I went over to Pittsburgh and I met lots of wonderful artists and I had a great time. So, for the next one, in 2016, I really wanted to get in, because you would, wouldn't you? Uh, and I wanted to see my friends if they got in. You know, it's a good excuse to go and have a party. Uh, so I was determined to make a piece. So all 2015, I'm thinking, I've got to make a piece, I've got to make a piece. And I was working on this one, uh, and I was working on this one through there, uh, Stratum, and Rust Rose. Because Stratum and Rust Rose were the same piece at one point. So, I was working on those two, but I thought this was going to be the one. And July, August time, it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite happening. I thought, right, let's move on. I started on uh, Stratum and Ross Rose. And this is it, this is going to be great. And I had it laid out, it looked fantastic. All the photos, really, really good. And uh, all of a sudden, I just thought, no, this is pants, as they say. <laughs> it just, it was flat, it wasn't working. And there was literally, uh, there's about six days to the deadline. So I thought, I failed. You know, when you just think, oh, I've blown it. Really, really blown. I've done all this work and it just doesn't work. So, it was a Wednesday. I went and sat and watched the Bake Off. That cheered me up a little bit. <laughs> and then there was also a programme on um, about... Um, it was, a, it was a, a group of Chinese teachers come to the UK and were teaching uh, British children. And they were having some problems. And to cut a long story short, they said, Chinese children do not give up. They do not give up. And I'm watching it, I'm thinking, hmm, well, Sue, you've given up. You've got five days left, and you've given up. So, I went upstairs, I tidied the studio up, because I always work better if I've had it with tidy. I got all of the bits of this that I've been working on, and I laid them out, and I worked, and I worked solid for five days. Literally, like 19 hour days, I was up till four in the morning and I just worked and worked and worked. And that deadline pressure as well, and the determination. So, I think sometimes you just haven't got to give up, you know? Um, and then that happened. So, I was really pleased and then I got in, so I was really pleased. And so, happy ending, I got to see my friends again. <laughs> and there you go. And created an extraordinarily beautiful piece of work. Oh, thank you. Do you consider yourself um, an artist or a maker? So? Well, I, uh, I think I consider myself an artist, but I make things. And I think it's, um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to disparage either because I think both are good, aren't they? I just, in my heart, I think I am an artist, as in I've always painted, I've always... So is there... Um, any advice that you would give other people about um, their practice? Just don't give up. I think that, you know, it's really, it is difficult. I, I, I'm just in an attic on my own and um, sometimes you, you, you do doubt yourself and what you're doing. And I think um, you've got to enjoy it, mainly. If you don't enjoy it, there's no point in doing it. You can't please everyone. Not everyone's going to like it. You've got to please yourself. I think, and I think I've learned that, you know, I'm just doing my thing and I'm enjoying it and you just got to keep doing it because not everyone works, you know, some of them are rubbish. Mm. You can't expect everyone to be brilliant mm. uh, and so you've got to keep making, you've got to keep doing and then you get wonderful, wonderful moments when it works and you're like, yes. <laughs> Well, I think that what we have here is pieces that work beautifully. Oh, thank you. And I'm so delighted to meet you and also to have your work shown here in Newcastle. We're so extraordinarily lucky. So thank you for coming across the seas to visit uh, oh, it's Australia. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you again here uh, in the next few years. Oh, I love that. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.